Ungumtrat. Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show with Marta and Anna. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge. And if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. <laughs> I was so much thinking about my neurolinguistic programming. I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, hello a, everyone. <laughs> was in a different room uh, yeah. than here. Sorry. Hello everyone. This is Marta. <laughs> this is Anna. And this is Lesa. And this is You've got five options. <laughs> oh my God, that was terrible. I think we we have a really i- interesting intro for this episode. Yeah, Marta was somewhere else, and I was trying to do something else, and it went as it went. Lasse, do you have anything to add to this wonderful intro? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just drinking coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, so maybe we are slightly all over the place, but welcome to the new episode of the same challenge, because this is episode number three, where we are solving Jack's challenge about his difficult working situation where we where he has to cope with an abusive boss. I would like to remind you that you can listen to the two previous episodes and also to all of our episodes on our YouTube channel, because this is where we store our fantastic recordings. So all you have to do is you have to go on YouTube, find You've Got Five Options channel, and then just listen till till the end of the world. Well, no, actually, we have only 30 episodes there, I think. So listen to the all 30 episodes, and they are for free, of course. And there are no commercials, nothing, so you can just enjoy it. Um, so now I think we are ready to read the challenge. I will just add that if you are more of a podcast listener, then you could also subscribe to our podcast in your podcast app on your smartphone. And then you can listen to us also offline. If you are running, taking your dog for a walk, etc. And you have all of our episodes available there. Marta said about the smartphone, but of course we are also on iTunes, we are on Stitcher. Uh, you can find us everywhere. Just go to our website, the5options.com. On a podcast, you can see where to subscribe and you can also find our episodes on the website. Yes, definitely. So, uh, so many options. Uh, don't get overwhelmed. More than More five. More than five. Exactly. Yeah. Huh? Okay, but now we w- I will read the challenge and it's quite a serious one. So... Not long ago, I moved to Denmark, where I had to find a new career path. I live in a small town and I can't work doing what I used to do before, so I got a job as a handicap helper, working for a woman with two children in her house. The person I help is my employer, and she is in charge of the whole thing, from schedule making, the delegation of the daily task, and supervising my performance. I've been in this job for nearly two years, and at this point, I have had enough of it. It is the result of more than one irregularities concerning her performance as an employer. Her lack of manners, making you do things that are entirely out of the responsibility stated in a contract, and her obsession with controlling every single thing that you do. This has pushed me to take the decision to look for something new, which hasn't proven that easy so far, and I am not able to leave this job until I have found a new workplace. What I'm finding challenging, and I would like you to help me with, is how do I cope in the meantime, emotionally with the frustration that results from her abuses and unfairness until I find a new job? Yes, so as Marta mentioned, it's quite a heavy topic. It's it's something that we are trying to advise on and solve for three episodes right now. And we have came up with five options. In first episode, we gave option number one, which was just to quit because I think we all got quite sensitive when we heard the word abuse. Of course, we don't know the extent of the abuse, so we have to be careful here. But that was option number one when we just advised Jack to quit. In option number two, we advised him to seek for a legal help or advice. Also to lean on on his friends because in situations like this, maybe you just need a a nice, comfortable, uh, calm place to go to and just talk about your feelings. But we also discuss about the legal advice because some things were clear like 
you know, doing things that are out of the contract. This this can be solved by uh, some counselors. Then we also talked about emotionally detaching yourself from a situation in the name of do what you need to do until you can do what you want to do. And we also talk about benefits, but also pitfalls of emotionally detaching yourself from a situation. It was a really great discussion, so you definitely need to revisit our second episode. And we have started to discuss option number four, which we called Cosmic Mambo Jumbo, but as I said, it's only because those are more alternative and not that mainstream techniques yet, and they are basically called emotional freedom techniques. So today we will discuss more tactics, models within emotional freedom techniques, especially one, and then we will also discuss option number five, which is rethink your career, make a plan for the future and stick to it every single day. So coming back to option number four, which was emotional freedom techniques, we started to talk about positive verbalization and neurolinguistic programming. And we have discovered that Marta here is a bit geeky in topic. Well, I knew it, but I didn't know that she knows so much. So I was actually surprised and blown away. And Marta gave quite a number of very interesting information and things that Jack could use straight away. C could you, Marta, refresh? What was the specific Jack situation advice? So uh, we were discussing that specifically with abusive or aggressive people towards us, it could work. It's definitely worthwhile trying to uh, combine the method of the broken record and uh, using the positive formulations while learning a little bit from the person and using their language and their imitating a little bit their body language and so on, using the positive information that we have extracted from them. But it could be a really good way to put the basic boundaries and work towards changing that behavior that we specifically do not appreciate with boss. We, of course, have to say that we know that the person is handicapped. We can see that the person is abusive. We don't know what kind of illness, what kind of problems uh, that, uh, you know, entails. So it could be that this will not work at all. But I believe that it is very much worthwhile trying and not giving up too quickly, because even with children, <laughs> they are not in control of their emotions. It does work. So it is quite likely that Jack would be able to set some healthy boundaries when it comes to very abusive behaviors, like, for example, I don't know, screaming or having a angry behaviors. So asking for what you actually would like to have instead in mm -hmm. a calm voice and if it doesn't work communicating uh, calmly peacefully that you are going to leave for a moment and come back when the person is ready to communicate peacefully as well and uh, trying to use this I can't guarantee that this will work because first of all I'm not any kind of a therapist I will repeat it again and also not having information about uh, what is the actual uh, challenge with employer but I believe that there is quite a good chance that it can help Jack also with yeah. his own approach to it. Yeah, I think that one, one thing that you, Marta, mentioned, and I think I also mentioned, and Lasse probably can also mention, we are not therapists. We are not psychologists. However, we are, at least um, Marta is using these techniques in her own circle of influence, especially with your children, but also with other people. And, you know, this is more like we are sharing our experience of what works and what we have noticed that works in our case. Of course, every case is different. Every human is different. Friend, but uh, those things works and um, that's why I think we are not saying that this is how you should do it but we are more saying like this is what we have tried and you could give it a shot because the results are fantastic. Yeah and uh, I mean communication is key in so many aspects of life whether it's a personal relationship or a work relationship you have to say if there's something that is bothering you um, otherwise the other person might not no, <laughs> yeah. but it's I don't have any personal experience with positive verbalization, verbalization. Yeah, whatever. Verbalization, yeah. Yeah. You know, verbalization. Handicapated, you fix it in post. Handicapped, yeah. handicapped, it doesn't matter. But it's a very interesting uh, idea that you try to think of what you want them to do and give a positive spin on, on it. And of course, be very calm when you say it. So you have to be in the right state of mind. Instead of saying, like your example, don't think of pink elephants. Well, then you're going to think of the thing that you are not 
allowed to think of, so to say. Yeah, exactly. So come with a positive example of what you want them to do instead. I actually、mm-hmm. think that's a very, very good point. But yeah, communication. You you have to say it, especially if something you are unhappy with or frustrated with. Mm-hmm. In any kind of relationship, you know,、yeah. communication is key. It's so、mm-hmm. important. Yeah, yeah, I think that you are totally right. Communication is the key, but I think also how you communicate.、Uh, is yeah, the key, exactly,、right? exactly. And I think that especially when you are in difficult, toxic relations, it doesn't matter if it's a workplace、mm-hmm. or marriage or、mm-hmm. relationship, friendship or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is very easy when one person goes with something negative or with raised voice. It's very easy to fall into and retaliate, and then you. Just get into arguments over and over again. So this idea here was just to switch into talking positively,、mm-hmm. give a positive message with a calm voice.、Yeah. Marta gave fantastic tips for trying to observe the body language of another person. Try to observe what are the trigger words in the vocabulary of that person and what are the neutral ones, and use that. So basically, you are changing not a discourse as such, but you are changing your approach, and then adding to it that. If you repeat something to someone over and over again, that actually has an effect on your subconscious because we also see the, let's say, negative consequences of that. If, for instance, you are a kid and your parents say to you that you are stupid or you are lazy, and you hear it over and over again, you start to believe that.、Mm. And you know the same with the positive things. If someone says to you, "You are great, you are worthy," then you also start to build your So、some kind of confidence. So those things sneaks many times to our subconscious without us realizing. So it, it's the same with you know Jack trying to talk positively. Let's say I would like you to speak nicely to me, or I would like you to trust me more with what I'm doing. That it's the right thing because I'm trying to do the best job for you, or I try to take care of you. Whatever that would be. And as Marta said, it may not work. Overnight, maybe not even after a week or two, but if you are consistent with that message, then it will most probably work. I think that the most beautiful thing that if you stick with it, Jack, the thing that you are very likely to have happening is that because you will be standing up for yourself every day. Every single time that person bullies you, I don't know if I can use that word. I'm sorry if that's not the right word, but every time you feel bullied and you stand up for yourself in this, you know, very positive and calm manner, but you clearly communicate that you've got your own back, that you are communicating. Communicating every single time what you want to be happening instead, even if it doesn't work for the other person, even if the other person is not in the capacity to change her behavior because maybe her disease is also、uh, psychological or something, and maybe those methods wouldn't work for her. You will actually make it work for you、mm-hmm. because you are standing up for yourself. Every single time, and you are building your resilience. In that case, you have your own back. So I would dearly encourage you to try something like this out, because even if the method doesn't work on the other end, I would say that there is quite a nice chance that it will work for you. Yeah,、uh, I mean, personal resilience is、uh, very important, and that's the thing about standing up to yourself, also, and just saying it out loud to another person. Of course, in the right way, in a calm way, even if the person doesn't. Respond to it or change the behavior. At least you have said what you would like them to do, and you don't want to be treated this way. Could you instead do this? Even if they don't change, at least you stood up to yourself, you know,、mm-hmm. and your own feelings and and. But you、yeah. know, miracles happen now. When I think about it, it's more like a Gandhi approach, you know, non-violent approach, yet standing up yeah, to, yeah. to what you、of、believe course, in, and that, that that actually worked, by the、yes. way, for Gandhi and for India.、Uh, so you know, it's a there is a huge potential here,、mm-hmm. and I think it's it's really worth to explore. But we actually have another interesting idea that I have tried once. So I I will just say that from my personal experience, it worked. However, it Also requires、um, some kind of、uh, self attention and a willingness to do it because it's not so easy, especially for people who have never tried it. And also, you know, you have to be mindful about it. Many times, when you are in a difficult situation or relation with someone, it's so just easy to go with your feelings and and feel bad and not to think about it. So I had a situation a situation once that was really difficult with someone that was let's say verbally abusive and was not、um, let's say there was an argument over something and I did it and actually it worked. There was a huge change next day. So what it 
it is and how I found find it because actually my my little story here was that I was trying to find some sort of a techniques I was actually talking with Marta at that time and she said listen Anna you cannot change you know the other person how he is so you have to like more ter- take care of yourself and how you respond or you know manage yourself in this situation I was looking at YouTube because YouTube is cool guys we also have a channel there so it's really cool and I found a little uh, video made by a lady I think I will maybe even like attach it to the solution it was called uh, how I change a relationship with my boss via EFT EFT emotional freedom technique but that was tapping and Marta will say a little bit more about what emotional tapping is in a moment because she's also an expert here not an expert but i just do it practitioner practitioner actually i would not use that word either because when i like sign up for my course like neurolinguistic programming practitioner so it's a person when you have actually finalized the course and you are now able to do it with other people so i would say i just apprentice apprentice that's a that's a nice word tapping apprentice amen fist bump Marta is a tapping apprentice. So basically, what was the method? The method was that the lady actually um, have made an effort to empathically feel the feelings of her boss because there was a situation with the boss that was very controlling. So she has put herself in the shoes of her boss and try, she tried to understand the feelings of the boss. So for instance, the boss is very controlling, which means that the boss probably have some issues with trust and so on. And then she actually put herself in that energetic position of her boss and then she started to feel the things that her boss feel and on the boss behalf she released them she basically started to say i'm releasing this fear that uh, things uh, will fall apart if i don't control them and she was doing that through tapping and Marta will say what uh, what tapping is and then she added beliefs and emotional uh, emotions to replace those things so she basically say I uh, trust my employees I love that uh, my employees are um, professional and they take care of everything what a wonderful fantastic feeling it is to know that I can count on my employees and I can let go and she did it on behalf of other person so and then Uh, basically the next day the boss told her things that she envisioned for her boss and it didn't came from manipulative place it came from an empathic place so what I have done I have tried exactly the same so I was actually in a meditative state and I was trying to imagine what the person I had a big conflict with and I couldn't see through it because we were fighting you know so it's you were a bad guy and stuff so I was trying to see to feel why that person is angry or frustrated with me I felt those feelings and I start to rewind them I start to imagine what would help like for instance I am angry but I would like to let go of it because in the end of the day I want to have a nice relation with people around me and so on so on it took me around 10 to 15 minutes and then I felt very light because maybe even if it doesn't work on another person it really wider your empathic feel about the situation and you start to understand that many situations are not only about you and that someone does something bad to you but you know everyone has its own thing and you know you can understand why the situation happens and yes yeah, surprise surprise next day that person actually changed totally the attitude and we were able to find an understanding and a compromise it sounds pretty bizarre Duh. but uh, it works it worked for me basically feeling the feelings of another person and releasing negative emotions and adding positive ones on behalf of that person that's some uh, next level shit <laughs> that's some next level shit i tried it once okay so but i don't have enough let's say uh, mindfulness many times to come back to this exercise but actually now when we were preparing the challenge for jack that was something that i have came back to and uh, i think i would try it again but the lady that actually did mm. the whole thing in the video she was using tapping emotional tapping and marta has actually something to say about okay. because but i think lesser uh, i think no. you have a comment no <laughs> no i'm just i'm it sounds interesting i'm just can i be honest yeah i'm skeptic yeah. about it to be honest yeah of course uh, do, don't you think that you just changed your attitude and then you saw what maybe you wanted to see to be honest 
it could be it could be but in the end of the day if i changed my attitude and there was a solution to the mm -hmm. situation afterwards then i could say then it worked anyway right yeah. so did i trick myself or did i really release some negative energy or emotions on behalf of another person i don't know let's say i would say i don't know mm -hmm. but the change next day was really really huge it was a totally different story so yes and i i believe that we can also um, you know rewire Rewind. ourselves yeah. or trick ourselves fine but w regardless of what it was it actually worked so i actually want to say that i am a huge believer of taking care of ourselves and our own emotions and our own attitude and so on so i have Me never too. tried to experiment with trying to do it on behalf of another person mm -hmm. i have tried to help someone deal with their emotions mm -hmm. uh, through tapping. Mm -hmm. So I am very much of a believer of doing it for yourself. So I have no personal opinion about whether it works or not. Uh, I'm actually not skeptical. I, I believe it can work. Mm -hmm. I would probably not be able to recommend it. Uh, mm -hmm. because I have not tried it myself. And I am also and it's not it's really not being skeptical. It's more about I have some internal ethics about impacting others. So I believed in the story that you said about the lady that was trying to do it on behalf of her boss. She actually asked her if yes. it was going to be all right. Yes. And I think if you ask someone and someone gives you of permission, course. Of course, then, of course, it's a different story. But what I wanted to say is I am a big believer in the tapping method mm -hmm. because I use it and I have used it many times now. And I also use it with my uh, oldest child and I have been deeply studying it. But I know it only from the perspective doing it for yourself. Mm -hmm. So what tapping is, it's actually a com combination of ancient Chinese acupressure and modern psychology. So that works to physically alter your brain, energy system and body all at once. What's really great about this method is that it's super simple. You can really learn how to do it for yourself from a five minutes video on YouTube. It's super simple. And the great thing about it is that you are at the same time accessing your body and you are accessing your emotions because what it is all about is to use your fingertips to tap on the places in your body which send message to your stress and energy system. So it's called meridian points. Mm -hmm. And if you tap on those meridian points, it sends a message to your amygdala and it basically helps you take your stress levels down. And this method can be used both for physical pain mm -hmm. and for emotional pain, for any kind of stressful situations, for anger issues and so on. And basically it's very, very simple to do it. I was I watched a five minutes video. I tried it myself. I thought, wow, that's quite interesting. I started to watch more about that. I started to try it on myself. I tried it on myself many times and uh, the you know, the effect is, is pretty amazing. And when I read about the science behind it and the psychology behind it, because it's both science and the body part, the physical part, what happens to your physical body, but also the emotions and all these positive verbalization. So that's why the modern psychology and the methods for neuro linguistic programming, if you connect those things, it's really good. Uh, I though have seen it on a short term basis. So when you are in pain, when you are in a distress, and so on, it helps very fast to get to feel better. I'm not yet sure how are the long term effects of doing that. But I definitely think that you know, even for a simple thing as Jack for you after such a day of an abuse coming back home and doing the tapping for yourself to release the trauma of the day, mm -hmm. or the stress of the day, or whatever, you can in five minutes, get to release those points, get your stress levels down, and actually connect with your emotions. So that's why I love the option for so much. Because it's not about emotionally detaching, it's about emotionally touching, Embra embracing, <laughs> yes, emotionally embracing and releasing. And that's the completely different thing. If you connect with it, if you acknowledge, mm -hmm. if you let your emotions to fly through you and then you release them, then you release them. 
they mm-hmm. don't get, uh, you know, they don't get suppressed. Marta, thanks a lot for this because the idea behind, you know, my example was that I found exactly the video and it was before of how a lady uh, changed a relationship with her boss and uh, by releasing some of the negative energy on her behalf and she has done it via tapping and it doesn't matter if you would like to go you know some advanced shit level like class said cosmic, cosmic mambo, jambo, jambo, jambo. and do it on behalf of someone and ask for permission from someone but even for yourself as marta said to release the stress and anxiety and those emotions that are not necessarily super fun to have i think it's a fantastic solution I really do. Yeah, so I follow this guy. His uh, name is Nick Ortner. Mm -hmm. He's a great tapping practitioner and he is uh, really a spokesperson for that method. And he's uh, implementing those methods at schools. It has great effects for children uh, to deal with stress at school and so on. And I would strongly recommend to simply go to his website or to find him on Facebook. Just type in Nick Ortner, Google. Actually, YouTube also. I found his videos on YouTube as well. But just find Nick Ortner. And uh, he sometimes does actually live videos for tapping. So you can actually do it together with him in a live uh, format. It's super easy. So simple. It's amazing. It's really, really amazing. So So I would say that even for skeptics out there and for anyone who is like, oh, what the hell is this? It is really simple. It takes few time. Try it. Guys, we are almost at the end. And the fifth option was rethink your career, make a plan for future and stick to it every single day. That's an option that we actually many times discuss in our other podcasts. So I think that here the very simple baseline is that when you make a plan for the future, so you know that you want to get a new job, when you make a plan for the future and you know when you where you are going, you are more uh, motivated to actually go there because if you are are just at the job and you are trying to survive from one day to another without having a goal to strive for, I guess it can be difficult. So here we would propose you to basically plan your next move. Where do you want to be? What is your, you said that you had a career before and you cannot work within the job that you had. So maybe how can I get back to my career path and what would be the plan for it? Where can I apply, you know, working on the CV, uh, sending it. So basically Basically, I know it's difficult when you are in a such a stressful job, but maybe thanks to option number four, you will have enough, I don't know, you will release your stress enough to actually improve the condition of your emo- uh, emotional well-being and be able to to simply stick to planning your career every day. And it doesn't have to be that you have to make a grand plan every evening, but maybe you can just make a basic plan or what kind of job you would like to have and make a deal with yourself. Like every day for half an hour, I'm writing a CV or I'm looking for job ads, you know? So you are getting active. At the beginning, it's difficult, but more you do it, if you have that contract with yourself and it becomes a routine, then you are getting on it. And then you start to see um, more opportunities then you start to believe that, yeah, I can actually get back to my career or I can actually get the job. And you you find a purpose, something to work towards. And that can be motivating and keep you going. You know, like you say, if you're just surviving, what's the point? You know, you can get into that circle and it feels like everything is repeating. But if you find like if you can make a plan, then you have something something to work towards. And that can be very motivating and and giving. And then you might be more open to opportunities, you know, when you start thinking that way. Yeah, I have something I'm working towards, something specific. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that can change, you know, um, your way of thinking. I, I believe so. Marta, anything that you would like to add here? Well, that, of course, I always am very much for having a plan, mm-hmm. spe- especially if you want to move faster forward in your life, if you want to get out of that situation, having a plan and having actions that you take daily so that you get yourself out yeah. of that situation is very strongly recommended. As And as Anna said, we have had that make a plan and go for it option in many of the challenges before. So if you are interested in on how to do that for yourself, please uh, look into our previous challenges. And Jack, we are keeping our fingers crossed for you. And we hope that you will be out of that job as soon as possible. And, uh, you know, getting yourself on the career path that you actually want to be yeah 
Okay. Thank you guys for today. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. You are listening to You've Got Five Options show, where we solve your life challenges. Remember that you can visit our website, thefiveoptions.com, where you can submit your challenge or find our previous challenges. That's all, folks.